production. Intensive, and as we saw earlier on, the other different systems, but here we're going to look into details. Our options for genetic improvement. Hold on. This is. Now, uh, intensive and semi-intensive systems of livestock production. Intensive system. The intensive system of livestock production involves confinement, high investments, and management for optimum productivity. Animals are kept in confined spaces and provided with housing, health care, and high-quality feed. Agro-industrial and farm waste are commonly used as feed materials. So cell feeding is a common method in the intensive system. The ranching system is common in okay, next is ranching system. The ranching system is common in lowland Europe and has been introduced to Africa and Asia. Herds of flocks are kept in large sizes within French areas. Imported breeds or their crosses are often used. Pastures receive agronomic inputs and rotational grazing to ensure quality forage. And creep grazing is used for young criminals. Uh, this creep grazing is whereby they leave holes uh, for openings so the younger or the smaller uh, ruminants can easily move out to the next garden. And then, specific time is allowed for pasture recovery to produce non fibrous but digestible forage. Intensive finishing or feedlot fattening. Intensive finishing is the final stage in meat type production system. It usually lasts for three to four months. High quality feed and veterinary services are provided. Often targets religious periods for animal sacrifice and then located near urban centers to meet high quality meat demand. Uh, the same, next is semi-intensive system. Semi-intensive systems are a hybrid between extensive and intensive systems. Breeding females may be confined at night in shelters, and then grazing is combined with concentrate feed, mineral salt blocks, clean water, and leguminous fodders. Breeding is carefully controlled. An integrated livestock production system. Integrated livestock production system combines livestock with other agricultural practices. Crop livestock integration involves growing crops for livestock feed and using animal manure for soil fertility improvement. Poultry production can be integrated with aquaculture, fish farming by channeling poultry droppings into fish pounds. And then similar integration has been suggested between small ruminants and corn fish production. In some areas, crop residues are preserved for grazers and animals are encamped, encamped to produce manure for cereal production. Examples of integrated livestock productions include one is crop livestock integration, two is poultry and aquaculture integration, Three small ruminants and pond fish integration, push introduction into irrigated rice farms, preservation of crop residues for grazers. These practices aim to maximize resource use, increase sustainability, and improve agricultural productivity. A methods of genetic improvement in livestock breeding. Farmers can improve livestock performance by changing the environment or altering the genetic makeup. With the animals. Genetic traits are controlled by genes and can be improved by increasing the frequency of favorable genes or introducing new genes. Two methods for genetic improvement are selection and crossbreeding. A selection for improvement, genetic traits can be simple, controlled by a single pair of genes or complex, are controlled by many genes. Recessive traits appear only in the homos goes form, and then selection based on simple traits can predict traits on current. 
Uh, complex traits like growth rates can be improved by selecting animals with superior trait expressions. Factors affecting genetic progress in selection. The factors influencing genetic progress in selection uh, programs include one is having a clear definition of the objective, what you want to attain at the end of um, this uh, gene selection, or, or which particular trait you want to be dominant. And then selection differential, measure of superiority of selected parents. Yeah, you need to see um, where is that, that gene you need highly expressed in which particular animal. And then heritability, proportion of superiority passed to offspring. Yeah, which uh, among the two animals, uh, the required gene is highly expressed in the, in the final offspring. And then generation interval, average age of parents when offspring are born, the difference in age, and then uh, accuracy of trait measurement. Heritability. Heritability is the proportion of parents' superiority passed to offspring. It indicates how much genetic variation contributes to phenotypic variations. Traits with higher heritability show greater genetic progress when selected. And then different traits in pigs have varying heritability. And then generational interval. Generational interval is the average age of parents when offsprings are being are born. Shorter generation intervals lead to more rapid genetic progress. And then pigs have shorter generation intervals compared to other livestock species like sheep and cattle. And then accuracy, accuracy of measurement. The success of a selection program depends on the accuracy of trait measurement. Traits like life, weight, gain are easy to measure accurately. Before starting a selection pro program, ensure that traits can be measured accurately. That trait that you want, make sure uh, you can easily measure it. And then estimating risk response to selection. The response to selection can be estimated using heritability, selection differential, and generational interview. Genetic gain per year can be calculated using values. What is progeny testing? It can be used to uh, evaluate genetic gain per year. Progeny testing focuses on improving boas since they have a significant impact on heart genetics. Yeah, it used to, it's due to own improving powers, that is the male animals or male unfrustrated animals, domesticated animals. Boas progeny testing accepted the boas genetic potential by evaluating the performance of its offspring from multiple souls. Progeny testing provides valuable information for traits that are not well suited to performance testing, such as sex associated and slaughter traits. However, progeny testing is expensive and time consuming, making it less common for traits with higher inheritability. And next is the performance testing. Performance testing evaluates an animal's own performance as a measure of its genetic merit. Traits with high inheritability are used as indicators of how the animal's progeny will perform, how the animal's offspring will perform. Better performing individuals are selected from groups of animals raised under similar conditions. Performance tests can occur at central stations with standardized environments or on farm or within hard comparison. And selection criteria in performance testing. Selection criteria in performance testing vary by country and the intended use of the pig. A common selection criteria include growth rates, Feed conversion efficiency and back fat thickness. The criteria for selecting breeding boas may differ from those used for terminal stairs. Selection methods. Two common selection methods are independent culling levels and the selection index. Independent culling levels set specific performance levels for each trait, and pigs failing to meet the standards are culled. And then the selection index combines economic weighting 
and heritability to create a total score for an animal. Uh, here is considering, considering multiple traits. And the index method allows for a balanced selection based on economic values and traits correlation. Improvement programs. Improvement programs integrate testing and selection procedures into a structured genetic improved plan. The lecture describes the National Pig Improvement Program in Zimbabwe as an example. The program utilizes a pyramidal structure with nucleus, breeders, central performance tests, multiplication hards, and commercial producers to ensure a constant supply of quality replacements. Harnessing heterosis. Heterosis or hybrid vigor can be harnessed for genetic improvement, yes, uh, combining them, uh, controlling their movement for genetic improvement so they don't move uh, and mate anyhow. And then crossbreeding exotic and indigenous breeds can maximize heterosis benefits, combining hardiness and growth performance. Challenges include maintaining exotic boards and controlling breeding. Possible solutions include institutionally managed boa holding centers and encouraging private farmers to produce crossbred protein. Benefits of heterosis. Heterosis also benefits boas, leading to greater libido, greater tests, and higher sperm count. Crossbred boas have enhanced reproductive fitness, improving breeding, breeding reliability, and conception rates. These advantages are particularly valuable in extensive and semi-intensive production systems in developing countries. Crossbreeding and artificial insemination. Crossbreeding involves exploiting heterosis, which occurs when genetically different breeds are crossed. Hybrid vigor ex exhibited when crossbred individuals show improved performance compared to the mean of both parents bred, of both parents bred, sorry. Heterosis is more pronounced in traits with lower heritability, such as reproductive traits. Artificial insemination. Artificial insemination is the collection of semen from a boa and its later introduction into a soap or guilt using a catheter. AI, involve, AI allows for the widespread use of boas with high genetic merit. One boas ejaculates can inseminate up to 25 boas, reducing the need for multiple boas. Uh, AI helps prevent disease transmission and eliminates boa to soil contact, reducing disease spread. Since they don't mate uh, naturally or physically, uh, the rate of disease spread uh, is eliminated. And then it overcomes practical issues related to size differences between males and females, ensuring successful mating. Yes, those issues related with difference in sizes of gen genitals is eliminated. And then AI also reduces the risk of soft men when handling boards or natural services. Yeah, it protects the headsmen from all those um, physical injuries and any other thing that happens during one uh, mating. And then AI techniques, semen collection. Semen can be collected without the need for artificial vaginas or electro ejaculators. Boas can be trained to mount a dummy saw or austral saw, and semen can be collected manually. Yeah, this, those metallic like legs, you just train these uh, boas, these male animals, on how to mount those metallic, metallic, metallic female, metallically made uh, female animals. And then cement dilution. Cement can be diluted using various diluents and extenders and stored in plastic bottles. And then insemination, a rubber spiral catheter is inserted into the soul's vagina, attached to a bottle containing the cement dose, and insemination occurs. Heat detection and timing of insemination are crucial for accurate AI. Accurate heat detection is essential for successful. 
conception, just like in humans. You need to know the safe days, the, the, the days, um, fertility days, and all that. And then semen storage, a frozen semen. Successful techniques for freezing raw semen have been developed. Frozen semen can be stored in pellets, foam, or straws, and can maintain acceptable conception rate. Long life semen extenders have been developed to store fresh semen for up to seven days without a significant loss in fertility. This allows for the transport of fresh semen for use in other countries. And then inherited def defects. Many anatomical defects, defects in pigs can affect performance and are often genetic in origin. Defects may be simple, controlled by one pair of genes, or complex, controlled by several gene pairs. On farm performance tests are conducted to assess growth, but thickness, and other traits. Pigs that meet certain standards are made available for sale. And then regular performance testing can lead to improvements in feed conversion, efficiency, and cost savings. A simple defect, simple defects can be effectively eliminated from a herd by culling. Examples of simple defects include uh, congenital tremors, where piglets are born with rhythmic tremors, and club food, which causes deformed and swollen feet. Then dams or parents carrying this defect should be culled from the breathing program. Then complex inherited defects and livestock improvement. Complex defects. Complex defects are more challenging to eliminate. A culling board is one approach to manage these defects. The exit of complex defects is generally low. Keeping a carrier board for defects may be economically preferable to replacing it with a genetically inferior board. A complex inherited defect and livestock improvement. Most of the defects can be set against the gain in peak performance when good records are available. Available. Such blowers should only be used for producing slaughter stock, and none of their progeny should be retained for breathing. None of their offspring should be retained for breathing. Examples of complex defects include protohania, amplical hernia, imperforate anus, sway legs. Hermaphroditism, cryptochitism, and female genital defects. Our past livestock improvement efforts, in temperate zone countries, livestock improvement initially focused on improving livestock housing and management to prevent advanced climatic effects. Advances in livestock breeding began in the 19th century, initially based on limited records, observation, and trial and error. The science of genetics gained recognition in the early 20th century, revolutionizing animal breeding. Today, genetic engineering holds the potential to further advance animal production. Uh, in contrast, tropical countries have been slower to adopt modern livestock improvement practices. The original domestication of most species likely occurred in the tropics or subtropics. Uh, the movement of livestock to isolated areas led to natural adaptation to new environments. Some cultures focused on breeding for cultural, magical, or religious purposes rather than economic gain. Importation of improved birds from Europe to the tropics first challenges due to differences in climate and disease resistance. Improved birds from Europe and America struggled to thrive in tropical Africa and Asia. Successful improvement efforts require addressing disease control, nutrition, and management. And the modern approach to livestock breeding Current efforts involve identifying tropical breeds and initiating selections within them. Introducing productive temperate time life, temp, temperate, temperate type livestock into the tropics through crossbreeding is a slow but promising approach. Preservation of genetic resources of indigenous livestock is important. And then 
choice of breathing policy options varies based on factors such as the type of indigenous livestock available, prevailing agricultural systems, managerial abil abilities, and market demand. Yeah, uh, policies for breeding to be put in place. Uh, there are various factors that have to be that just like the type of the uh, livestock available, the local life, livestock available, then the prevailing agricultural systems, such systems are being used to um, raise this livestock, and then the managerial abilities and market demand, what is needed in that specific market. Breeding options, breeding policy options include selecting for productivity in indigenous stock, upgrading indigenous stocks with exotic males or salmon, Introducing a Christmas breeding system, introducing exotic stocks, or improving climatic stress. The choice of options depend on local factors and circumstances. Cross breeding examples include the white Fulani and Frisian cattle in Nigeria. Upgrading indigenous cattle. Cross breeding can lead to improved lactation yields. Preserving Pure bred indigenous cattle is essential for genetic diversity. And managerial abilities of local farmers need breeding. Cross breeding as a tool for tropical livestock improvement. Uh, introduction to cross breeding. Cross breeding involves mating unrelated livestock. Crossbred offspring inherit traits from both parents and tend to resemble each other. First cross generations are usually superior in productive traits compared to the mean values of both parents. This phenomen phenomenon is known as hybrid vigor or heteros heterosis. The degree of hybrid vigor depends on the complementarity of parental genetic characteristics. Uh, Crossbreeding can be a useful tool in tropical livestock improvement. Benefits of crossbreeding. Crossbreeding can be useful in three ways. Um, bre breeding replacement stock. It helps in uh, breeding replacement stocks. Uh, it's important in upgrading indigenous and low producing livestock by back crossing with more productive exotic stock, improving the quality of whatever you need. And then uh, creating new synthetic breeds by crossing indigenous and introduced stock. Uh, systemic crossbreeding between two or more breeds can harness both hybrid vigor and complementarity. Genetic engineering in livestock. Genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology is a modern approach with potential for livestock improvement. It can be used to modify animal functions for better adaptation and productivity. This technology has been applied to produce vaccines for some animal viruses. A gene cloning involves copying and manipulating genes to increase genetic material. Genetic engineering can lead to the creation of new animal generations. Major genetic differences between tropical and temperate breeds. Over 50% of performance differences between tropical and temperate livestock breeds are due to genetic factors. Genetic differences result in varying economic traits under similar environmental conditions. Examples of genetic differences in cattle include age at first calving, calving percentage, milk yield, birth weight, daily weight gain, and mature body weight. Other traits showing genetic differences include gestation men, generation interval, and carcass killing out percentage. Options for genetic improvement. Using indigenous breed is one option, but selection for increased productivity may take a long time due to previous natural selection for survival. A priorities. Priorities under this option include improving genotype, environment, interaction, and focusing on economic traits like life weight gain and disease tolerance. 
Upgrading with exotic breeds is another option that can hasten productivity improvement that may result in the loss of local breed genetic resources. Um, Crossbreeding combines desirable traits from different breeds with advantages in traits influenced by the environment. A crossbreeding limitations include obtaining suitable breeds and the need for complex management. Plan planning crossbreeding should focus on areas of breeds that prove advantages or merits. Thank you. That's all for session for today. Hi, Samuel.